Welcome to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, this is pre-calculus. We are working through the Demana Waits Foley Kennedy pre-calculus book, and we are officially in Chapter Eight. Uh, this is uh, one of the wrap-up videos for Chapter Eight, and. Uh, I was asked to do a video where basically I uh, went through doing some problems that are backwards. And so we're talking about problems where I give you some information, some of the what I've been referring to as stuff. And then uh, from there, you write the equation. And so that's, that's what this is all about. So the example you see up here, we're, we're probably going to do just four examples. And there's not a lot of background. Uh, so this one should be fairly, fairly quick. Uh, so it says, write the equation for a parabola. Parabola uh, with focus uh, negative two four and directrix directrix excuse me x equals zero uh, x equals zero also known as the y axis so if it said at the y axis or something like that then we would know what to do uh, as is my custom I'm going to do a little sketch and uh, again it doesn't say you have to do a sketch but uh, my concern is I need to have a feel for what this thing looks like okay so there's a focus. Um, and then, as you know, the directrix is uh, the y-axis, or x equals 0, the line where all of the x values are 0. And remember that for a parabola, uh, the focus, well, for all of these uh, shapes, the conic sections, um, the uh, focus has to be inside the curve. And the directrix uh, is going to open away from the directrix. And just a reminder, this specifically for uh, the parabola, the vertex has to be halfway between the focus and the directrix. So this is kind of how it's going to look. Okay, now I don't really know how wide it is. I don't really care. Uh, all I'm doing is focusing, at, pardon the pun, on uh, getting the general issues of it correct. Now, just a reminder that if the parabola opens left or right, it's going to be x equals, and that means y minus, and uh, remember the h and the k kind of switch because the y value has to go with the y and the x has to be, go with the x. So since this is y minus k, uh, and since the y is inside the, the k, the y value for the vertex has to be there. Okay, so the first order of business would be what's the vertex? Well, I need the y value. Well, the y value is going to be the same y values for the focus, so that's going to be 4. And the x value, remember the vertex is halfway between the focus and the directrix. So, well, I have an x value of 0 and an x value of negative 2. Well, what number is halfway between them? Now, just a quick reminder, one way to do this is do a quick little average. So negative 1. Again, this is the x value. This is the y value. So as I write the equation, it's going to be a times y minus the y value squared plus uh, h. Well, plus h is really a neg plus a negative 1, so I'm going I'm to write minus 1 instead. Uh, the only thing left is, what's a? Well, just a reminder that we've seen a couple of little formulas for this. Uh, f equals 1 over 4a, or the other rearrangement of this is 1 over 4f, and uh, just comes from multiplying both sides and solving for the other one. So, now, the other uh, little thing we need to remember is f is, that little f, is the distance from the vertex to the focus. Now, if you move from the vertex to the focus to the left, as is the case here, then it's actually negative. Okay, so, so the little f on this one, little f, well, we're talking about going from negative 1 to negative 2, so it's actually, uh, little f is a negative 1. Okay, so a will be equal to 1 over 4 times negative 1, and I'm going to call that negative 1 fourth. Okay, so x equals negative 1 fourth, y minus 4 squared minus 1. Okay, and that is it for that one. Okay, um, just a reminder that if the parabola would have opened up or down, uh, then instead, okay, so if it was up or down, y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Okay, and the a is still 1 over 4f. Uh, remember that this will be the x value for the vertex, and uh, uh, k would be the y value for the vertex. Okay, all right, so that's a parabola example. Uh, write the equation for a hyperbola. Now, this is my clever way on the, the little, I, I could have done this in math type, but I didn't. I just did it on this software, so that plus or minus is supposed to be there. Equation for a hyperbola, and we have vertices and equations of asymptotes. Now, 
I personally, I, I purposely picked this one because I, I think the asymptote issue makes it a little more challenging. Okay, a um, couple of issues here. Uh, again, I'm going to uh, go ahead and do negative 2, 4, and 4, 4. Now, and those are the vertices, not foci. So vertices are actually on the hyperbola, and since they are left and right of each other, the hyperbola is going to open left and right. Okay. Um, the center will have to be halfway between there. Okay, so that's going to be right here, and I believe that puts us at 1 and 4. Now, quick little check here. Notice how this says x minus 1, and this says y minus 4. Is that consistent with the 1 and the 4? I think it is. Since it opens left and right, I can do the x minus 1 part here, y minus 4 part here equals 1. Remember, for an ellipse and a hyperbola, it's always equal to 1. Um, so again, the center was at 1, 4, and it's x minus the center, uh, x minus the x value and y minus the y value because it's inside. Uh, remember, that makes it inverse. Okay. All right, so next up on our little uh, plan here is this distance uh, is A, the distance from the center to a vertex, or this distance if you prefer. Well, this is at 4, 4. Well, that was interesting. Okay, so those are 3 apart, so A equals 3, and you can count if you've been graphing carefully. So, and that would mean that A squared equals 9. So the 9 goes in the direction, it's left and right here, so it's got to go with the X value. Alright, next up, I need something to go underneath the Y, I need B. Well, if I had foci, I'd be doing A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I don't have foci. What I have is the slope. Now, slope, remember, is rise over run, and that, that's related to that box. So, if, so the idea here is I'd be going up 3, so I'd be going 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Well, that doesn't get me to the vertex. The width of this box is 3. Okay, so remember that, so let me just kind of do a little aside here. Slope is rise over run. Well, rise is y, and run is about x. Well, this value that I have here is 3, and it doesn't really matter whether I work with the positive 3 or the negative 3 because it's the same slope, same steepness, just one's going up and one's going down. And this needs to be rise over run. Well, I know my run is 3, and what I don't know is the rise for my box. Okay, so this is the run from my box, and I got this from A. So the, the question ends up being, what is this value? I'm going to call this B. Uh, what is that value that I need? Well, I can, you know, I think some of you can just eyeball this and know that something over 3 equals 3 over 1. Well, you know, that's not hard to figure out. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do some algebra here, a little cross-multiplication, cross-products. Uh, 1 times B equals 3 times 3, so b is 9, and, and now quick little note here, you don't put b in the equation, you put b squared, so this will be 81. And we're done, that's it. So that, to me that's kind of as ugly as it's going to get, and uh, the issue there is uh, you have to find a way to make that slope. Slope is always going to be, for, for the hyperbola, it's either going to be b over a, or a over b, but it's always the change in y over the change in x. Okay, so calling that good for uh, hyperbola, and let's let's do another example. Having too much fun over here. Okay, uh, equation for a circle. Okay, well again, I'm going to go ahead and make a little picture here. Okay, and then it's also supposedly going to pass through one seven. So something like that, and the idea is it goes around like that. Okay, now that's not perfect, but it'll have to work. Okay, now you already know the center, and and this is uh, I'm, you know that you you do know the center. This this is the form, and try not to mix it up with the form for an ellipse uh, where there it's equal to one. Okay, so it's x minus the x value for the center. Well, x minus a negative two will be plus two y minus the y value. And the only problem is, is we really don't know the radius 
Um, this distance, you know, it, if I knew if I knew this guy right here, you know, if this was something four, then it'd be super easy to figure out the radius. Or in the same fashion, if I knew, you know, this distance and it was at negative two something, that'd be super easy. I could just count or do a quick subtracting of x and y's. When that doesn't work, the most efficient way to solve or to find r squared uh, is to take this point. Now, remember, this is an x value and this is a y value. <clears throat> Put it in for x and for y. And then just solve for r squared and you'll be done. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to do 1 plus 2 squared. Oh, sorry, I don't want to put the letter y. I want to put the y value in. 7 minus 4 squared equals r squared. So this is 3 squared. 7 minus 4, that's interesting, is 3 squared. So this is going to be 9 plus 9 is 18. Now, it's probably worth noting, uh, well, let me, let me just do a little quick aside here. So the radius will be uh, the square root of 18, which is 3 root 2. But honestly, they don't ask you for that. So you really don't need to do that. So really, all you need to do is put the r squared where the r squared goes. Okay, so one more time. x plus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared equals 18. And we're done. Okay. Now... Again, let me just add a couple thoughts here. If so, sometimes what they'll tell you instead is the endpoints of a diameter. So, like for instance, from here to here are the endpoints of a diameter. If that happens, you're going to have to find the center, and so you might have to find the midpoint of those two points where you're going to have to average the x's and average the y's. Okay, you're going to have to figure it out, figure out what it is. Okay. All right. So that's a circle. And then one more. Uh, we're going to write the equation for an ellipse, and I'm giving you foci, focus this is, is and uh, the major axis. Okay, so let's kind of see what's going on here. So again, I, and I know this is, I keep saying it over and over again, but it really helps me to uh, know which direction things are going and what's going on if I draw it. Okay, so these are foci, or for focus. And you are told that the major axis is 8 long. Now, I'm going to go ahead and find the center next. And the center, you know, as is the case for most of these, it has to be halfway between these two values. So it's going to be a negative 2 something. And that something has to be halfway between uh, 4 and negative 2. So uh, a speedy way to do this is 4 plus negative 2 over 2. So 1. Now, if you can kind of eyeball it, you know, like if you knew that this was at negative 2, 1 without actually doing all that, I'm fine with that, provided you're sure about it. Okay, so like for instance, this 1 is 3 units away from 4, this 1 is 3 units away from negative 2. So that's fine, that confirms it, I'm happy with it. Okay. All right, so already I know that we're going to have x minus the x value squared over something y minus the y value squared over something equals 1, and we've talked about it 100 times. Why is that equal to 1? That's just part of the form for an ellipse. It's always equal to 1. Okay. The major axis is supposedly 8 long. Well, this was 3 and 3, so apparently it's going to have to go one more. One more. Remember that foci are always on the major axis, the longer one. Okay. Um, so, I know that it's vertical, okay, it's longer this way, so, and, and again, uh, that distance from 2a, the entire major axis is 8, so the semi-major axis would have to be 4, and what goes in the equation is a squared, so 16, and again, that was vertical, so I'm going to put the 16 right there, underneath the y, okay? Now, the only problem with this is we don't know what c is, I'm sorry. We don't know what b is, what the a, the b squared is. I, I need to know what goes right here. Okay, so there we have that little rearrangement of the Pythagorean theorem. Now remember this, you know, this is just based on the way that things are set up in the ellipse and what we've labeled things as a and b. Uh, a squared equals b squared plus c squared, and I know that feels awkward because of the Pythagorean theorem and what we're used to. Well, a squared is 16. 
B squared is what we want to know. And C squared is 9. And then the question is, okay, Mr. Sanford, where'd that 9 come from? Well, remember the distance from the center to the focus was 3. That's what C is. Okay, so if you know that, you know C. Well, if C in this case happens to be 3, then you guessed it, C squared is 9. Well, so in place of that C squared, I put 9. Subtracting 9 from both sides, uh, B squared has to then be equal to 7. Now, B would actually be the square root of 7, but again, the thing that goes in this equation is B squared, so I'm just going to write it down. And I'm done. Okay. Now, again, and, and I, I'm not going to do, you know, 100 examples of every kind. Uh, I just want you to be aware that I could have given you um, the endpoints to the major and minor axes, uh, or I could have said all of the vertices are, and, you know, it could have played out just a little bit differently, but the process is very, very similar. I tried to pick examples that were the hardest uh, combination of information just so that you would have to, so that you would see, you know, all the different steps you'd have to go through if, if it was worst case, okay? All right, so this is like a, a little extra video. Uh, it's a video, uh, Sanford Flip Math uh, 8.4 and a half. Uh, thank you, Troya, for the lovely title. And uh, we will see you in class, and uh, we're, we're getting ready for a test. Thanks for coming. Thank you for watching Sanford Flip Math, and uh, we'll see you in class. Bye-bye.